to the June 25, 2002 meeting of the Cape Elizabeth Zoning Board of Appeals. Uh, first item on our agenda, call to order. Um, we are missing uh, two members at the moment. Um, we have Mr. Tranfaglia, Ms. Miller, Mr. LaPlante, um, and Mr. Keneally. We are missing Dr. Chapmas and Ms. Jordan at the moment. Um, they may join us as we go, but we do have a quorum and we'll proceed. Um, next item on our agenda is to approve the minutes of our May 29, 2002 meeting. Uh, comments on the minutes? And uh, Mr. Keneally, you of course were absent for the last meeting, so <coughs> don't expect I a motion or comments will. from you. Dr. Chapmas is joining us. <coughs> uh, comments on the minutes? Uh, hearing none, uh, may I have a motion for approval? Motion to accept the minutes as printed. A motion, Mr. LaPlante. A second. So second. Second, Mr. Tranfaglia. <coughs> Discussion on the motion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Approval of the minutes as submitted. Um, None opposed. Uh, Mr. Keneally is abstaining since he was absent, so the minutes are approved by a vote of um, five in favor, uh, zero opposed, and one abstention. Next item on our agenda is old business. We have one item of old business to hear the request of Stephen and Sarita Solomon for Kettle Cove Road, tax map U16, lot 7A for a front property line variance of nine feet, zero inches from the required 25 feet, a left side property line variance of five feet from the required 25 feet, and a right side property line variance of 15 feet, zero inches from the required 25 feet to replace the existing ranch with a one and a half story cape with attached porch. Um, this came up on our agenda last month. Uh, we do not have a packet from the Solomons. Um, Bruce, any update on this? I'll, I haven't got a hold of the Solomons, so I'm not sure what's happened. Um, I will get a hold of them before the next meeting to find out whether they're going to be carrying this forward or not. Uh, well, is, is there, without a packet, is there a reason why we should keep carrying it forward? Um, only because I sent them away. They had a packet, but the packet was very incomplete, so you'd never get it in your packet because you would have thrown it back to them anyways. So um, I gave them the option to either submit that package or, or getting something together, and they hired Northeast Civil Solutions to do a more professional um, packet, and, and that's where it stands. So no, I guess there isn't. I, I, I will find out definitely before the next meeting, and, and we can make a decision based on, or you can make a decision based on what I find out. OK, fair enough. Uh, we didn't table that, table this matter last time. I think we simply left it as old business and moved on, and then with no objections, we'll do the same this month. Uh, new business, uh, one item of new business, and that is to hear the request of R. Alexander Miller and Holly Smivog. 58 Beach Bluff Terrace, tax map U10, lot 16, or a right side property line variance of 14 feet from the required 25 feet to construct a two-story addition at 11 feet from the property line. Uh, Mr. Miller and Ms. Smivog, the floor is yours. Um, if one of you or both of you would like to come up to the podium. And if you would uh, tell us your name and address, please. Hi, I'm Alex Miller, and uh, I live at 58 Beach Bluff Terrace. This is Holly. And um, we, um, 
uh, I'd appreciate any direction you can give me if I'm not giving you the information you want to know. I'm just going to try to uh, briefly hit on the highlights of our application. We put a, a lot of effort into it and uh, it pretty much has everything that we want to say in it. Uh, we really appreciate our neighbors here. Barbara Sheehan on the far end and Charlie Mayone are both uh, important people in this for us because there are adjacent landholders and as you've probably noticed they uh, they are involved in a uh, in land swap that we propose to make this all happen. And then Paul Kinchy is another neighbor just here uh, as a support. Um, our family, uh, Holly and myself, we have two young daughters. One's two, her name is Erica, and one is uh, nine months, Sophie. We moved here about 15 months ago, and uh, we love the neighborhood. Uh, our house, um, which, which is a great, uh, cute cape, has neither a basement nor a garage, and as uh, we probably could have foreseen, uh, we find ourselves lacking for storage space, and we, we would like to build a garage on the side, as, uh, as these plans will show, and uh, a bedroom above it, as well as a small kitchen addition on the back. Uh, in looking at our street, uh, it appears to me that uh, we're the only house on the street that doesn't have either a garage or a basement if not both. Uh, it also appears to me, uh, and this was uh, suggested by Bruce Smith, that we just go and sort of try to evaluate setback issues. And I think there are about 15 or 16 different houses on our street, from what I can tell, just as a lay view, uh, are within the typical 25 foot, 30 foot setback that, are, that seems to be required on either the front or the side uh, for various dwellings. So in, in looking at that, uh, I thought that we could build a reasonable case for practical hardship uh, in, the, in the sense of not having a garage or a, a basement and economic difficulty uh, in that there seem to be many houses that have had, uh, in one way or another, acceptance made. Uh, so in looking at our setback requirements, and, uh, and we did this with Bruce, uh, and also looking at what possibilities we had for uh, putting a garage on the property. We, uh, we felt that the only logical place that we could do it was at the end of the existing garage uh, adjacent to our house. And by the time uh, we put together a single car garage there, I think you'll see that it comes to about four feet of our existing property line. Uh, Bruce let us know that uh, you would in no way consider anything less than 10 feet. And it was at that point that we started to explore uh, options for how we might uh, try to exchange land with neighbors so we don't reduce our, our lot size since it's a non-conforming lot. Uh, and, uh, and conceptually, and that's a, an important part of this, our two neighbors have agreed that, uh, that if you were willing to make a, uh, a variance contingent upon moving through with the title and the deed and everything, uh, uh, that they would be willing to swap land with us and, and create situation where we would have a setback of 11 feet at the side, which would be the closest place. Uh, I think that those are, um, I think that those are essentially the details. I'd be happy to try to walk you through the plans or, or explain anything. Um, that's kind of it in a nutshell. I respectfully request a variance. <coughs> oh, and we also have two letters of support, I should, I should mention, and I think those were, um, those were brought to uh, the planning office in the last week. Yes, and for the record, we do have um, the, submitted to us this evening, as part of our packets, um, a letter dated June 24, 2002, from David Clutchy, Clutchy, 48 Beach Bluff Terrace, and a letter dated June 21, 2002, from Alice Grant and Matthew Faulkner of 61 Beach Bluff Terrace. Professor Clucci was a professor of mine at college. Oh, really? He's a great guy. Some questions for <laughs> Mr. Miller from members of the board. Um, I have a legal question, which I brought up to Bruce uh, before the meeting. But, um, I was involved with a zoning board case about four years ago where uh, it's not quite perfectly parallel to this, but we had a ruling from our council, Zoning Board's council, who was the same council today, that um, 
without an applicant having an ownership stake in the property, it's impossible for the zoning board to grant an action related to the property. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I'm not an attorney, David is, but you know, even as a non-attorney, I'm worried about this being sort of an ambiguous circular thing where we could possibly give you a conditional variance, but now we have a conditional transfer and each is dependent on the other. You have two things conditional but dependent on the other. I just don't know how that plays out. Um, but I know that we did have um, a council opinion that I'm very intimately familiar with that uh, said the zoning board could not act unless there was some ownership stake in the property. Well, I actually gave it a little thought and Good. <laughs> before coming in here wondering how that might work. But it seems to me that um, if we were to grant the variance, grant a variance of 14 feet from, is it the north property line? Yeah, and I think from the it north. would probably be 11 feet, but... Uh, well, but a variance of 14 feet, reducing it from 25 to 11 feet. Oh, gotcha, I'm sorry, yeah. Um, <laughs> if that's done, they have to build 11 feet from the property line. Now, if they're mm -hmm. able to expand their property line, Mm -hmm. That will affect where their 11-foot setback yeah. is. But if go. we grant, um, if we grant the variance now, um, permitting them an 11-foot setback, they obviously can't build consistent with the drawing that they've submitted right. without getting additional land. Or they can build 11 feet. Even if they don't get the land, they could build right. 11 feet from their property line. They would just have to adjust what what they're building or where they're putting it. Good point. Does that make sense, Bruce? Makes sense. Yeah, that's a good thought, great thought, great solution. Thank you. Well, <laughs> um, does anybody else have a different view of that, though? Dr. Chapman, maybe, maybe this is what you were saying, but the property line could end up in another place than where it's sketched and he would still have a variance to be 11 feet from that property line at a totally different location not totally different but somewhat different from what is uh, drawn out on the sketch the location of the of the of the as shown on the plan could not change the of the, of the building the variance is of that specific footprint. footprint so it couldn't slide okay it can couldn't slide that was what I was leaning toward. Can we make this contingent upon this footprint in this location? It's, it, the approval is always given for, the, for, for what's on the plan as far as the footprint goes anyways, At, period. And not based on the sidewalk, is that correct? That's correct. Bruce, say that again. I'm not sure I understood that. When somebody comes for variance, the specific location they show on the site plan is, is, is if the approval is granted, is the only location. They couldn't slide it forward or backwards. They could pull it away from the property line in the same footprint. But they couldn't infringe on, on the setback in a different location than what was approved on the plan. That's no different than if, if you got an existing dwelling and you want to expand to front or back within a setback. Uh, you need Board of Appeals approval. Just because you're at 11 feet don't mean that you can expand either way at 11 feet without going to the board, so it's the same situation. So if they were able to acquire 50 feet on the north side of their property, they couldn't still build 11 feet from their new property line? That was my question. I mean, that's... You said it better than I did. In other words, looking at this, this drawing from Northeast Civil Solutions, we have, I think, actually this isn't north, is it? Um, this would be west. west. Uh, to the west side, if they were able to acquire land that came very close to the barn, to the west of their property, um, I think Dr. Chapman's point is, would they still be able to build, would they still be able to build 11 feet from that new established property line? Or would they be limited to the footprint as shown on which is this sketch plan? Which is 12 feet from their structure. Right. 
<laughs> which is 12 feet from their structure. And he answered that. I, 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 I still go back, and that's a different scenario than I was thinking of. I still go back to the fact that this is a site plan that was submitted and, and that that's what would be approved. Even, you know, so if they wanted to all of a sudden get a variance from an, another property line or proposed property line, so be it 50 feet away, I, I, I would have to say that I'd have to send them back to the Board of Appeals and you'd have to hear it again. So my approval for any building permit would be based on this plan and this plan alone. But uh, we have to adhere to this drawing as the documentation. Right. That means we have to, if we choose to approve a variance, we have to approve a variance from a property line that does not exist right now. You could make the contingent upon that happening before I issue the building permit. If you, you know. the other I think we've got some insurances here. Uh, Another question. This is a, a preliminary sketch plan. It's undated. Does that have any effect on this, Bruce? Well, they, they did. They did. They do have a. Uh, they do have the sketch plan that, that the board would require, and all our measurements are taken off from the Northeast Civil Solutions sketch plan. Okay. This this sketch plan is better than a mortgage inspection plan. It's that's the, what I'm asking you. Yeah. I mean, this is what this is what we preliminary, and it's not dated. So, but as far as you're concerned, it satisfies the requirements. It's not dated? No, it has here where it says date here, so it's, <laughs> it's undated. Well, it probably should have been. I think that's inadvertently left out. It's also been marked preliminary. I don't know if you can, yeah, you can, see it. You can read it uh, down in the bottom block over the address. It says preliminary, so it's... Also to the notes. Can you clarify why they marked this oh, preliminary? I think they marked that preliminary because uh, the, uh, they were going to finalize it when we did the swap, and so it's all back in the kind of the chicken and the egg thing. And uh, finalize so is meaning they were going to show that, that a clear final, new, new property line. Excuse me. Yes, that's right. Um, they came out to our property. They they shot everything with the, with their equipment. The measurements are all now down to the inch, uh, but but they didn't finalize it because our business with them isn't conducted, it uh, isn't complete yet. That's my understanding. They're, uh, in fact, they're, uh, Dick Hamilton, the project manager for us, I think, came and spoke with Bruce. So I think, to some degree, Bruce may know as much as I do about the status of the final document. I, I, that, I, that's I, my I, answer. That's, what, that's why I, I didn't have a problem with the fact that the, that the sketch plan was accurate to the degree that the house was placed on the lot in, in, at, at its location. Um, I didn't, uh, didn't realize, I didn't even see the preliminary until you brought it to my attention. But um, Bruce, when you see a sketch plan like this, the final result, the one step further, is an actual survey, right? As he's mentioned, they've been out, they've taken their points. This ske uh, sketch plan is, is, is much better document than a mortgage inspection plan, which, which this board will accept. Um, it certainly it's not, it's not to, to, to the accuracy, well, it's not a full survey, but they do stand behind the sketch plan um, as to the house location on the lot, and that's the important ingredient. It's a little unique, um, something the board hasn't had, I don't recall, proposed property lines such as this. So it is, it is unique in that sense. Dr. Chapman, you showed two dimensions on your sketch plan, at 18 feet coming from the west side of your dwelling. And 28 feet deep for the garage, for those definite dimensions? Are they definite dimensions? Yes. That, that, if, if you were to give us a variance, yes, we would build exactly that uh, because we would just turn to our builder and say, move ahead with the plans as drawn up. Those are the only two footprint measurements you have is 18 feet from the west side of the house and 20 feet, 28 feet deep to the garage. And would you like clarification on some of the additional? I'm talking about dimensions of the footprint. 
here's a first a first floor plan which shows the back measuring uh, 30 feet six inches and and this being 20 28 feet and then 18 feet from the from the door is that am I answering your question the rear measurement is how many that 30 feet plan. 30 feet six inches if you uh, there, there's a corner that 30 feet six inches there's a corner that's cut off but the the distance between the wall of what's called the new kitchen addition and the and the edge of the uh, and the edge of the garage would be 30 feet six inches that figure does not show on our schedule that's, that's my omission sorry uh, regarding the shed will it need to be moved uh, it will need to be moved and uh, and that's a detail we haven't dealt with we don't know whether it needs to be moved off the property or whether we would just move it to the side Mm -hmm. uh, there are no requirements regarding the shed placement other than our ordinance. I mean, he, this can be placed wherever in relation to the property line. Is that correct? Well, there are requirements for setbacks, and, and if you know, if I they meet the setbacks when they d decide to relocate, then they'll get a permit to relocate. If they don't, then they'll have to come back to you. That would be a separate issue. I'm sure they're not going to want to do that. <laughs> what are the setback requirements? Depends on the, the size of the shed. <laughs> uh, the shed is roughly 10 by 10, but, I, but that's rough. Huh? Well, so is the current shed in violation of setback? How big is the shed? I think it's 10 by 10. But I believe that I've seen, I can't answer your question specifically, but, um, but I saw in our... Uh, in our package or transfer of information when we bought the house, a, a, a document from the from some entity of the town requesting permission for location of the shed, where I assume it is. So that's 10, 10 100 square foot shed, not greater than eight and a half feet in height, can be as close as 10 feet to the side property line, five to the rear. Um, I don't have my scale with me, but um. looks like it satisfies that. Your sketch plan shows the shed on there. Is that its current location? Yes. Do you plan on putting a basement under this? We no, we don't, and I don't think we can. We have a pretty substantial ledge underneath us, so. So you aren't anticipating blasting? Uh, well, I, I'm not anticipating it, but I, I can't really answer the detailed aspects of that. I just know our current house has a crawl space underneath it. And I don't believe that blasting was required. I don't know, Barbara, if you know. Uh, we are expecting to mimic the, the foundation. At least that's my understanding with the builder. So uh, as far as I know, no. You aren't planning? Uh, I'm not planning on it, no. And we're certainly not going to try to build a, a, a basement. Re regarding the driveway, will that be moved? No. Uh, I will probably try to pave over a small portion of it, and it may become, it would not be moved. We might truncate it, a portion of it if it didn't align with the, with the uh, garage properly, but the current plan is no, no change to the driveway. You, you show, uh, we have two different plans. And you show a property line movement somewhat different. Um, on this plan, you show the property line uh, rotating around yeah, the center yeah, point. Um, um, I apologize for including that in there. That was actually our initial proposal until we determined that, that Barbara doesn't own all of the land that is basically should ignore that. that that was put there to give you an idea of the footprint of the building but that those two triangles uh, we were told by our surveyor that one we can't uh, reduce our frontage on the road which makes that one uh, unacceptable and secondly that uh, that Barbara who, who is our immediate neighbor to is it to the west uh, doesn't own uh, a portion that's represented by that triangle and so please so, ignore it so you will not be affecting your street frontage property line as indicated on this plan. We would not be, that's correct. Okay. Uh, so these 
A, B, C, and D, yeah. those are somewhat correct? Those are correct. What is the purpose of A? The, the purpose of A. The opposite side. A is indicated. The purpose of A is to gain square footage enough so that we can give Barbara enough to, we have to make it a three-way swap in order to uh, not reduce the size of our lot and to be able to give enough to our immediate neighbor in order to, uh, and also to gain from, I'm wondering if, uh, I don't know if you can see well enough, but this, all of this, uh, ignore this, but all of this land here is owned by Mr. Mayon, both across the back and through here. And so the purpose of A, which is over here, is to gain, is to gain this section here, essentially. And it will also enable us to get enough square footage to, to grant a smaller swap with, with Barbara Sheehan. I think, if I might clarify, the whole purpose of what they're doing is to not make lots more non-conforming. So they have to swap um, so that the end result is the same square footage as what they had prior to. So there are three party, three party, three lots of three different parties involved. That's correct. The, the end result will be that all three lots will have the identical square footage after the land swap. That's correct. Is that correct? That's correct. And so hence that's the purpose of the narrow strip D? Yes. Do you know the purpose of the circle 103, 104 through 107 that go along the front of your lot? Do you have any idea what that's for? The old lot numbers, the old Beach Buff original subdivision lots. 103 refers to developer plan then, is that it? Yeah, the original developer's plan numbers. They were long thin lots like that? 20 foot wide lots? Yeah, and well, and people were, had the option, well, my understanding is they had the option to buy as many 20 foot segments as they felt like buying. So that's why you see such a disparity in that neighborhood. You'll see 100 foot or 90 foot, you'll see a 200 and something foot, you'll see all kinds of different shapes. It was it's kind of unique in its own self. Is that, is that what you've heard, Bill? That's what I've heard. I think the building of Beach Bluff Terrace was an exciting, fascinating <laughs> event. So, the, uh, the notch on the back of the proposed addition, I assume that's notch so you don't have to apply for a variance. You mean, you mean this notch here? In the, in the back corner of the proposed addition. Yeah. Uh, well, it's, it's actually not. Uh, it's actually because uh, it's proposed to be uh, windows and so it will create a, a, a three faceted, okay. you know, three windows instead of just a corner. Uh, I don't know whether, uh, maybe the builder did that without us even realizing it, and, and uh, we thank him for being clever. What's the solid line that comes out from the existing dwelling and comes with a couple of jogs in the back line, joins with the outline of the new addition? I'm, I'm sorry. I don't Is the house a deck right now? I think he's talking about that. That is a deck, yes. Yeah, okay. That's an existing deck. Yes, it is. Does that deck have a variance associated with it, Bruce? I have no idea. It should, right? I don't, I really don't know the history. It could have been, you know, I don't even know the age of the house. Um, it could, have, it could have been appended to a variance, could have been done before setbacks changed. It could have taken advantage of the 50% reduction for decks after 30 day waiting period through my office. This, the audience is somewhat creative in its ways for decks. So I don't know the status check. The, the other two landowners involved in your swap I'm sure they fully understand that this will affect their deeds and affect that. Uh, they do, but they're both here. And, yeah. 
maybe they should speak for themselves. I think I think they do. Yes. And these are these are will end up. Mr. Smith being regarded the instruments, is that correct? The, these land swap will end up being a recorded yes. uh, instrument affecting their deeds for all three That's companies. correct. That's correct, and of which have, we'll have copies. Have you, is this fairly routine, this, this type of transaction? Not as, maybe as complicated as this, but oftentimes um, in order to to uh, gain some land that they need, swaps to take place. If, if all three parties, or your experience, if, if the parties, associated parties agree, is it relatively straightforward? Or there, I mean, if everybody agrees, is it a straightforward transaction? I believe so. Okay. Thank you. When do you anticipate the land swap being effectuated? Uh, if you were to grant us a variance, then we would uh, we would go back to the surveyor and, and uh, probably I think we need to retain an attorney and to execute it. I'd say in a month. We would like to start building in the early fall, which is when our builder is, and we would of course want to move forward and wrap it all up. So I'd, I'd give us a month or six weeks. Who's your builder? Uh, Jeff Bartlett. Other questions? I notice we're going from three bedrooms to four. Um, we need to take into consideration the septic system's qualification. Um, I haven't yet. Uh, certainly will. You run, you run septic down. Yeah. What did we, did I, I thought you said we that did there, was a, there was a one-time. Yeah. Okay to add one bedroom, but if we wanted to add and then another one, we would that would be an issue. That was my it all. It all. It all comes back to me. Uh, <laughs> no, that, that we did look the plan up, and this plan was is substantial is in substantial compliance with the code, and what that means is it was installed after 1974, and it's not failing. Uh, the code says that you can expand one bedroom on that existing system as a one-time exemption without having to do anything with the septic system. And that is the case. That's why, yeah, I remember talking to him now. Is that the case for any septic system installed after a certain date? After 1974, yeah. yeah. You have, as long as it's not failing, um, of course. Does, it, does that require any engineer report? No. you make a visual inspection as to whether it's failing or not? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's really not. I don't make it a point to go out there and look, no. But what? I don't make it a point to go out there and look, but I'm out there enough during the construction that I'd probably be able to tell if there was something wrong. It's usually feel easy to tell. So. Yes, it is. <laughs> so I've experienced them. Just so. a couple sniffs. The grass grows taller over that's already time. happening, I'm afraid. Was that an admission against interest that he didn't want to make? I, I ignored <laughs> that. I, I was hoping you, you <laughs> might, too. <laughs> Other questions for Mr. Miller? Thank you, Mr. Miller. Thanks. Ms. Smivog, would you like to add anything to your husband's presentation? I think Mr. Miller handled it perfectly. He did a fine job. Um, other people here to speak in favor of the application? Who would like to go first? Would you <coughs> step up to the podium, please, and tell us your name and address? Uh, I'm Paul Kinchy of 66 Beach Bluff Terrace, the house down at the end. Bruce approved our addition some years ago. But I would just like to comment that uh, these are the type of people that we want to keep in Cape Elizabeth. They're a young family, uh, they're well uh, respected in the neighborhood, and they are willing to improve their property, which will increase the tax base. And, uh, I would strongly encourage you folks to grant the variance simply because I believe that if they do not get the extra room that they need, they'll move out and uh, we'll have lost a uh, great 
uh, family for Cape Elizabeth. Thank you. I'm sorry, I didn't catch your last name. Oh, I did, I did that right then, huh? <laughs> Kinshi, like Kinshi, come out and play. K-I-N-D-S-C-H-Y. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Kinshi. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Next. My name is Charlie Mayone, Charles Mayone, M-A-Y-O-N-E, and I'm uh, involved with the small land swap uh, with the Millers. And your address, Mr. Mayone? 52, 52. Bluff Terrace. And I'm in complete uh, agreement with the, uh, with the proposal, and uh, I must second much of what Paul Kinchy said. I agree wholeheartedly. We're their lovely neighbors, and we'd sure like to keep them and uh, keep them happy. That's all I have to say. Thank you very much. at 62 Bluff Terrace, and I can't really add any more to what they've already said other than the fact that I agree, I want to keep them there, and uh, uh, we have a good relationship, and uh, it's a nice end of the street to be on, and I've been there the longest of any of them, so since 70. So anyway, so we're happy to have them there. That's it. Thank you. Uh, I'm sorry, I didn't catch your last name either. Sheehan. -E Thank you very much. Well, seeing no one else in the room, I take it there is nobody here to speak in opposition to the application. But if there is, speak now. Seeing none. Um, were there any other questions from members of the board, or should we close this to public discussion? Okay, okay we will close the public discussion and open it for discussion among members of the board. Comments? Um, I just want to say that I had the opportunity to view the house when um, it was for sale a couple of years ago for my parents, and I thought it was an adorable place. It's really well kept. It was in a great location. Um, but the problem was, in my eyes, there was no storage. Um, and I know that anybody who buys this house will probably have that. And if we didn't consider this request, we would be considering another type of request. Um, this is a great addition. It's an attractive home. It's an attractive addition. And I think it's something we should strongly consider and approve. So, nice. Well, the only drawback to all of these additions, and this was stated well, and I don't, this, don't get nervous from this comment, <laughs> was stated well by one of our former colleagues and brethren, Mr. Fristacci, and that was that with all of the additions that we see being added to these starter <coughs> homes around Cape Elizabeth is that for each one that has a second story added on or is substantially enlarged, it's one more starter home that is forever lost to new families who want to come into Cape Elizabeth and find a starter home. But I also think that if you make your starter home bigger, you're not going to, you're going to keep that starter home. It's, I mean, it's if you, be it if you can, longer. If you can afford it when you're looking for your starter home, you're, you're right. Um, and it's just one of the, one of the trade-offs that the town faces with requests like this, but that's not, an element for the board to consider in whether or how to act on this kind of a request. Just an observation that it's certainly something that we've seen a lot um, with requests that have come before us. A lot of homes uh, being enlarged. Uh, one of our own board members um, doing the same thing recently. 
maybe even two of our board members recently. Um, but it's just a necessary consequence of an enlargement of homes in a small community without a lot of new land for new starter homes to be built. But anyway, um, other comments? One thing I just add, I think it's also nice to see the support of your neighbors. Um, and this was a really creative solution and very <clears throat> support. Um, it was, it's a definite, it's a nice sign to see the neighbors backing them up. Mr. Chairman, just, I'd like to uh, <clears throat> concur also. I think the, you know, we're always torn, I think, between the, the visceral response to me is not to give variances. It's supposed to be an exception. Uh, on the other hand, um, there are certain neighborhoods where there, there are non-conforming lots, and the intent of the variance was to, was to keep the neighborhood intact. And I think that this solution is very creative by keeping everyone's lot that are all non-conforming uh, uh, the same, and that it's a, a, a wonderful, uh, I think, addition. And I think that's the spirit of the, of the ordinance, is to keep the, the, the spirit of the neighborhood and to have uh, neighbors here supporting it and to get, you know, it's hard sometimes to get one neighbor to get an agreement with a, a swap, uh, to get a, a three-way swap going is sort of a tour de force. So uh, I think for that alone it should be supported. I, I concur with Mr. Trent Bagley's comments. It's, you must be good neighbors to get the kind of support that, that you're getting here, and that's great to see. Um, I agree as well. And I think that the applicant certainly pursued every available option to him. Um, <clears throat> the land swap amongst the neighbors is very creative, certainly seeks the solution to the problem, and the proposed addition is, is modest. It's a simple one-car garage with uh, use of the living space above it. Um, <clears throat> the fact that it sits further back from the road seems to mitigate the, uh, the proximity to the sideline as well. So I, I think that the, the addition would sit very well on the land and it would be an attractive improvement to the lot and to the neighborhood. I, I should add to my comment, just so there's no um, misconception by the parties here or anyone else who might be uh, watching or listening to us with their own uh, variance application uh, in mind. That is that the board, the board doesn't make a decision based on whether or not there is neighbor support or opposition. Um, it's, it's always nice, I guess, for us to know whether there is support or opposition, but unless there is opposition that is founded upon one of the elements of the ordinance. Um, it really is not something that we, by the various elements of the ordinance, are to take into account. So, I mean, even if the whole street comes in and signs on in support, if the proposal doesn't meet the elements of the ordinance, it's not to be approved. Um, contrary, if everybody comes in in opposition to it and it meets all the elements, then it should be granted. Um, so I just don't want anybody to get the impression, not only in this room, but that from those who might be, be watching um, and playing the home game, that um, we make a decision based on the show of support from the neighborhood, because that, that certainly is not the case. Um, but uh, let's go ahead with the various elements. I have one question. Uh, Mr. Smith, may, assuming that this variance is passed, do we, as the board, need to be at all concerned with the, the outcome of this land swap? Uh, going back to your earlier statement that a non-conforming lot cannot be made less non-conforming, do we need to address that issue in our, in our statement, or is that automatically understood that that will take place as an equal footage so that there is no decrease in, in uh, uh, lot size. Do we even need to address that issue? Well, I'd like to think that, that, that you'd be comfortable enough with, 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 with my uh, carrying that through uh, before I issue a permit uh, that all that is in place. Um, 
so that said i don't believe in if that's the case that that you would have to do anything more than prove the application based on the plan who will monitor that aspect of it you will yes i will look at the deeds in and then i'll probably verify i'll have to assess a plot plot the uh plot the deeds on you know to make sure they correspond to the plan because he has a plotter on his on his uh computer that he can do has that capability so that that'll be the double check to make sure everything's okay would would this type of transaction require a boundary survey or, or is a sketch <clears throat> is this is this an academic exercise to, on paper that a sketch plan if, would if everybody satisfy. agrees with the with the with the existing lines and and they know the square footage is beyond those lines uh then then i think it's as simple as making sure that the the deed description describes the same square footage that's being swapped it hinges on the line being where it's supposed to be on the on the face of the earth of course i don't know if the applicants are going to have necessarily those lines surveyed or not but uh, the, the, this, you're going to use the sketch plan as 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 the existing to, to verify your prop property lines or are you going to have any more detail well to be honest uh, we would prefer to do it as cheaply as possible and and the surveyor we've had uh, both sides of that presented uh, it's my understanding according to the surveyor that we could take this what would be a final sketch plan and the survey work that's been done which is very accurate and, and then record that indeed with no further no further work. That was what, uh, that's what the, uh, is it Jim, the, the, the president of Northeast Civil Solutions told us. And his, uh, his site, uh, or his project manager uh, wasn't sure, and so that's something that we have to resolve. See, the, you know, I, as you probably heard from me before, the, the sketch plans, uh, although not a full survey, um, the, the, the surveyors won't do the sketch plan unless they have enough evidence based on deeds, pins found, GPS, and, and, and the like. They, if they don't have enough information to get, do an accurate sketch plan, they go back to the applicant and, and say, you know, we can't do a sketch plan for you. We're going to have to do a survey. And that's why, exactly why the council wouldn't buy this board requiring sketch plans because they didn't want the applicant at any point to have to go to the expense of doing a full survey. So they understood that the sketch plans would work um, and that's why we had to back off to the mortgage inspection plan. But the sketch plans, you know, they won't do them and won't stand behind them unless there's enough information. So I wasn't suggesting at all to go to a boundary survey. I was I, I'm trying to troubleshoot this. I don't want us to go through all the motions of, of proving a variance and then it either become hung up on the survey or I don't know if there are any mortgages associated with any of these three properties, but I assume the mortgage, uh, mortgages will have to be readdressed and, and that mortgage will have to be somewhat modified. Maybe, maybe not, but I would assume that. I don't want us to create a situation that somewhere down the line, if one of these property owners wants to sell one of these properties, that it becomes a mortgage issue at that time. So I, I and, and well, I don't want to make something complicated out of something <clears throat> simple, but I could perceive that this could, uh, I just want to make sure that it's, we're not creating a new problem if we approve this variance, uh, uh, for example, with mortgage situation. And I don't know how myself or the board can control something that may happen as a result of this. I mean, if we if we get documentation that the swap is is uh, the same square footage and the deeds show that, um, I think we've met our obligation. So, I, you know, I, I nothing's foolproof. I mean, I'm not sure unless unless we get the town attorney involved with reviewing all this, which I don't. I'm not sure the taxpayers um, want to want to put that bill at this point when 
to prevent a future problem. I, I guess that's what I'm trying to say. Bruce, going back to the veracity of the sketch plan, there isn't a legend that reflects it, but doesn't the circle at three corners of it indicate that that's an iron pin? I'm pretty sure that that's what that means. Yes. Having done that recently. Yeah, usually. So basically, he's got three iron pins found, and his dimensions, the eight foot, is taken off of that. So you've got to feel pretty confident that that's pretty accurate. But that's what my question earlier was. I think this is just the sketch plan away would, from being a survey. The, the sketch, but as complete as the sketch plan is in regards to the existing lot, wouldn't be in front of you if Northeast Civil Solutions wasn't sure that that's the boundaries. Right. Um, I mean, they won't do a sketch plan unless it's accurate, yeah. or unless they can prove that it's accurate. There's a just trying to recall, usually when they find a, an iron pin, the sketch plan says iron pin found. Yeah, and I can't understand well, why might it is not new, in. These might be new ones actually put down by the survey. I, I, don't, I don't know. Do you, do you know the answer to that? Yeah, the three are clearly visible. They've been there ever since we purchased the property. So they're old? They're old, they're old and okay. they're really easy to find. They're even tagged red. Um, Bruce, going back to your comment and Dr. Chapman's comment about a non-conforming, not, not um, being permitted to make a non-conforming lot more non-conforming by reducing the size of it. Now, I assume that somebody with a non-conforming lot can deed off part of their lot to a neighbor to reduce the size of their lot but it would simply prevent them from then, perhaps in the future, obtaining a variance. My understanding, it would that cannot take place. No, well, the non-conforming lot cannot transfer any portion of the property? That's correct. It, it, it's, a, it's, the same, it's the same thing that, that, that if, you was to, if you were to go out and create a, a lot that's, that doesn't meet the dimensional standards, no action probably would be taken by the town because we may not even be aware of it. But certainly, you'd, when you come to get a building it, permit, that, that would be a problem. And, and, and the same thing could apply. We may not catch somebody doing that. Or nor do we care about going anywhere if we did, necessarily. I certainly would address it if it was making a lot more non-conformed. But, you know. Doesn't it, wouldn't it only become an issue if the person who created the lot that was more non-conforming than it was before the transfer attempted to come to you with a request for a That's what would permit? That, that would trigger some, that would definitely trigger the action from the town on a refusal of a building permit application, for instance. So I think that we have to assume that the parties involved in the transfer are being properly advised as to their own, their own interests. And I don't think it's incumbent upon the board to provide legal advice to people with regard to what's required in preparing a deed or releasing part of a mortgage or any of those issues. Um, you know, there may or may not be more legal work involved than you anticipate, but if there is, that's simply something that presumably you will put the bill for your neighbors to do. Uh, to do but I think that, that, that the parties involved all have to go into this with their eyes open as to what the, what's required to protect their own interests. Um, and they either get it accomplished or they don't, and if they don't, then the applicants don't get the bill their addition. They do get it done they will have at least received clearance from us. <clears throat> Bruce, how does the sequencing of this go at the courthouse as far as the registering of the land swap and the registering of the variance? I don't believe the variance will, will be, be able to be recorded until after the land swap. Until after the land swap. Yeah. And the variance has to be recorded within 90 days, I believe, so you'd have to take care of everything before we 
give you the variance uh, to be recorded. Everything would have to be in place. Well, the variance is only going to refer to the reduced side setback, correct? Yeah, but 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 we're going to want some book and pages, books and book and pages, for for as part of the recordable document to refer to. And if there's going to be some swaps for for other parcels that that that, that directly relate to the variance, um, I think it'd be behoove us to put those those book and pages on the on the variance form. It's somewhat unique. I mean, we never had to, I don't recall doing this before, but I would assume that everything should be in place first so that we could refer reference can be made to the books and book and pages if there's multiple. And the variance has to be recorded within 90, 90 days. days, which will start the timeline running right. to get the land swap completed. Otherwise, it becomes null and void, and they're going to be out of luck. And you think the variant test should refer to the book and page number of the various lots involved, the, which there, will include it, yeah. the, the, new parcel, the new piece that's being added? I believe that's the way it should be handled, yes. It certainly, you know, it certainly is going to take out any doubt yeah. as to what transpired, I believe. Well, it does create a little complicating factor f for the applicants, but they'll just have to realize that they're under a timeline to get this completed. That's okay with us. We, we're hoping to beat the 90 days in terms of the beginning construction, so we're, we're headed about there. So it, it's within our expectations. We bump into a problem, I guess that's our issue. But I, I guess that brings us back to Mr. Keneally's opening question and comment, and that is whether or not this whole thing should be expressly made conditional upon the completion of the land swap that's described in the sketch plan. And, and well, although I originally came into this thinking that it wasn't necessary, now I'm starting to think that maybe it should be. You mean so the applicants have to come back? To the no, no, they don't have to come back. That, that our, that um, whatever approval we give be expressly conditioned I, upon. You know, and I, I think that's fine. I mean, the end result is going to happen one way or another. So whether you make it a conditional mm -hmm. Well, no, I, I, the end result is they're not going to get a building permit until everything's in place. So, I mean, I, the, I think everything is in place to protect the town in that okay. respect. Um, you know, you can make it conditional. It's the same. It's going to be the same result if you want me to handle it from that point on. Uh, Mr. Smith, what documentation will you expect to see then to, to for you to feel comfortable that it has taken place, the, the book and page number of the report. Well, the, deed, the deeds will come in with, with the, the, from the registry with, with the recordings, for book and page. Showing uh, equivalent land swaps based on the sketch plan. Right. And I assume that the applicants uh, are aware that there will need to be complete legal descriptions of these five or six parcels that are going to be swapped by the surveyor, uh, very detailed legal descriptions of distances and angles and, and locations based on compass settings and found pins. And then those will become exhibits and, and to deed uh, documents that will need to be prepared by attorneys and then that will in turn have to be recorded to satisfy the requirements for the equivalent land swap. Okay. If I may, if I may, um, my understanding since this evening, this is, would always be conditional, but I thought the timeline would be 
90 day, I mean, what would have been stated by Mr. Miller earlier, if I interpreted it correctly, was that uh, Northeast Civil Solutions, once they, they wanted to send a, a permanent sketch and that would have no notes to it because all the, the uh, property transactions would have been complete so there'd be no notes needed and they would then draw in permanently and that would become a permanent sketch. My understanding would be a variance would be conditional but I don't think the timeline, I mean, to me, it wouldn't be in effect until all the conditions were met. So I think once the property is exchanged, the calendar year starts for one year from that point, not that they have 90 days from this evening's decision. Well, they, so. they have 90 days to record yeah. the, the variance. Right. They, they, they have more than 90 days to transfer a property if they need be. In other words, if Well, not if the recording of the variance requires a reference to the book and page number of the parcels that are being swapped. Then I, if I think the same, I think the same condition should be put on it. There should be an amendment to the variance going in effect from one calendar year from the time that that condition is met. That's not within our authority. Yeah, that's another issue. We can't do that. Well, no, we can't amend the ordinance. That's for the town council. Go through the planning board, then to the council. Well, that's all governed by state law, so. Okay, well, let's, let's go ahead with the various elements. Um, okay, first, um, by a show of hands, I, um, all members of the board who find that there is no substantial departure from the intent of the ordinance. And that is found in the affirmative by a vote of six in favor, zero opposed. Um, although a show of hands of all those members of the board who find that a literal enforcement of the ordinance would cause a practical difficulty as defined by 30-A, Main Revised Statutes Annotated Section 4353-4C. And that is found in the affirmative by a vote of six in favor, zero opposed. Um, a show of hands of those who find that the need for a variance is due to the unique circumstances of the property and not to the general circumstances of the neighborhood. And that is found in the affirmative, six in favor, zero opposed. Um, a show of hands of those who find that the granting of the variance will not produce an undesirable change in the character of the neighborhood and will not unreasonably detrimentally affect the use or market value of abutting properties and determining whether a variance would have an unreasonable detrimental effect on the use or market value of abutting properties. Uh, the zoning board shall consider if the variance would have the effect of blocking an established view, posing a fire safety hazard, casting a shadow on an adjoining lot, reducing the appraised value of an adjoining property by 10% or more, or of eliminating the privacy of an adjoining property without an effort to mitigate the law's privacy. And that is found in the affirmative, six in favor, zero opposed. A show of hands of those who find that the practical difficulty is not the result of action taken by the applicant or a prior owner. That is found in the affirmative, six in favor, zero opposed. Um, a show of hands of those who find that there is no other feasible alternative to a variance available to the petitioner. And that is in the affirmative, six in favor, zero opposed. Um, a show of hands of those who find that the granting of a variance will not unreasonably adversely affect the natural environment. Six in favor, zero opposed. And last, um, a show of hands of those who find that the property is not located in or in part within shoreland areas as described in Title 38, Section 435. Also six in favor, zero opposed. <coughs> Um, those findings having been made, um, may I have a motion from someone um, substantially as follows. Uh, whereas four or more voting members of the Cape Elizabeth Zoning Board of Appeals have found that the applicants um, are Alexander Miller and Holly Smevog have established that a practical difficulty exists with respect to the applicant's property at 58 Beach Bluff Terrace, 
tax map U10, lot 16, in accordance with provisions of section 19-5-2B1, the Cape Elizabeth Zone Ordinance, and whereas four or more voting members of the board have found that the applicant has met the applicant's burden of proof in establishing that all conditions specified in section 19-5-2B1 have been met, I move that the application for a variance of the variance for a right a right side property line variance of 14 feet from the required 25 feet to construct a two-story addition at 11 feet from the property line for the construction of the addition specified in the application be approved. Um, conditioned upon the applicants completing the exchange of land as described in the sketch plan submitted with their application. Second. We have first the motion from someone. Mr. Keneally, a motion. I move the motion as described by Jim. And a second. I would second it. Mr. LaPlante, discussion on the motion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Opposed? The motion carries and the application is approved by a vote of six in favor, zero opposed. And that completes that matter. We have no other items of new business. Any communications? No. Mr. Smith, no communications. Question, Mr. Smith. Um, in conjunction with the site visit to this property, I was, I was reminded that we approved a variance sometime last year. I think it was Todd Road. Todd Road, it was a road two roads away. And uh, I know that variance was approved based on the fact that they would actually move the foundation back so that the addition of a bay window would not extend the structure any further than the old structure. Has that been monitored to be done properly? When, before he submitted the application, um, I reminded him that that's what they needed to submit. I haven't taken the actual measurement, but it, um, I haven't actually taken that measurement, no. Uh, but but I, I reminded the applicant and the con contract to, of the conditions of the approval. Uh, and he was aware of that when he put the foundation in. So, I mean, I could take a measurement, but I'm not sure where to, how to do that because yeah. I'm not sure what pins there. A motion to adjourn. So moved. Mr. LaPlante, do we have a second? Ms. Miller, all those in favor, we are adjourned. <laughs>